Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome back. Today I want to talk about Cloudflare tunnels. Cloudflare tunnels can be used to securely expose internal applications, web applications for example, to the internet without opening up ports in your firewall. For example, if you have an ISP which is blocking port communications to your network from the internet on port 80 or 443 for web services and you, want, you still want to host the website in your internal network, but you cannot expose it with a port forward or a firewall, well, Cloudflare Tunnel is an option because it will create a tunnel from your internal network to the Cloudflare network, and then you can configure which web applications you want to expose to the internet from the internal network without opening anything up on your firewall. I will show you how this works. It's very handy. If you have several applications running internally, like if you have a home lab and you have several applications running internally and you want to expose them to the internet using a secure option, you don't have to worry about port forwarding or opening up ports in your file. Let's get into it. Now, Cloudflare Tunnel is part of the Cloudflare Zero Trust platform. The Cloudflare Zero Trust platform can be used to protect several components of your network. We're not going to talk about that. We're only going to talk about the Cloudflare Tunnel because in this case, Cloudflare Tunnel will allow me to open up my web server, my web server running a WordPress blog to the internet without opening up ports in my firewall or without using port forwards in my firewall, right? So uh, this is very handy if your ISP is blocking several ports to your network uh, for security purposes. In this way, you can still expose those internal uh, websites or applications you want to use to the internet in a secure way. As you can see here, this is what's basically happening. We have the Cloudflare network running on the internet side, and we will have to install a small component on our internal network. That component will create the tunnel from our internal network to the Cloudflare network and will allow us to open up those specific ports and in that way open up, in this case, my WordPress blog. For this to work, one thing is very important and that is that web server or that web application you're running internally, you want to expose us to the internet and you want to have a DNS name on that application, right? If, for example, if it's an internal website, you want to have that URL for that website exposed to the internet, listening, uh, for um, for requests. Now, that means that before you set it up, you have to think about what domain name you will use to access those applications from the internet. And another very important part is that that domain name needs to be running on Cloudflare DNS. In my case, as you can see, I have a domain configured here on Cloudflare, the modern workspace.blog. That's the domain name I want to connect to my WordPress application. That WordPress setup, WordPress application is running on my internal network. And as you can see, see here, there are no specific DNS entries for that domain besides running it on Cloudflare. So in my internal network, I have an Ubuntu server running with Docker and I have a few containers there. One of the containers is a Portainer container that makes managing my Docker containers uh, easy. Um, and the other one is the WordPress installation I was talking about. So those two containers, I want to expose them to the internet so I can log in from the internet and manage my Docker hosts using Portainer, but also expose my WordPress websites to the internet and do it in a secure way. The first thing we need to do is create a tunnel in Cloudflare. Go to the Cloudflare portal, click on access and click on tunnels. Here we can create a tunnel. If you click it, you can just give it a name. In this case, I will give it the same name I'm using for my WordPress domain. Now, if I click on save tunnel, Cloudflare now have created the configuration I need 
to set up the tunnel component in my internal network. As you can see here, I, I have several options. And one of them is uh, Windows, Debian, or Docker, right? Uh, by the way, these keys will be, get deleted before I upload the video to YouTube. So uh, no security issues there. Now, because I am already running Docker here, I will click on the Docker option and choose to create my, or to install my Cloudflare tunnel, my Cloudflare tunnel component on my Docker host. So what I will do is I will copy this, this Docker run command, which is automatically generated by Cloudflare and contains the specific and correct configuration options for me. I will just copy it, go over to the terminal and in the terminal of that Ubuntu server, that local Ubuntu server I'm running, I will just paste that Docker run command, click on enter, and it will now create the Docker container with all the components for the Cloudflare tunnel, and it will automatically connect to the Cloudflare network. That's nice. Let's see how it goes. The tunnel is created in my Docker host. If we switch back to the Cloudflare webs websites, the tunnel website, click on tunnels. And as you can see here, the tunnel is up and running in my network, is already connected to Cloudflare network, and it's healthy. So the tunnel here is healthy, that's fine. If you go to Portainer and check what the Docker container is doing, as you can see here, that command I copy pasted on my Ubuntu server it has created that specific cloud tunnel uh, container. It's running and it has an, its own name. The thing is, if I switch back to the terminal for a second, the tunnel is running here in the, in the command prompt, right? So if I would close this uh, terminal, my tunnel will now stop. As you can see here, the Docker container running that component is stopped. If I go back to my Portainer uh, portal, my Portainer website, I can see that that Cloudflare tunnel has now stopped. And if I refresh the tunnels here, just to be sure, you will see that this is down. So it's fairly quick and instantaneous. If you start that tunnel, it connects directly immediately to the Cloudflare network. So in order to run this always and give it a name, which I can remember, right? Within Portainer, I click on the container and I will opt in here to change the name. So right, that container is renamed successfully now. And another option is I will change the startup to always. So that means that whenever I reboot my Ubuntu server, for uh, for update text for example and um it will reboot then it will automatically start this uh, cloudflare tunnel container now up right so if i go to containers i can click on this and say start now well the tunnel is up and running again if i go back to the cloudflare portal if i click on tunnels you will see that the tunnel is healthy again so it's very fast it's very quick to connect to the, uh, to the Cloudflare network when the container running that Cloudflare tunnel component is up. Now it's time to create those applications. There are two applications I'm going to create here. One is the Portainer portal and the other one is the WordPress website. Portainer and WordPress will be connected to the domain name I have uh, already running on Cloudflare. So in order to do that, let's first create the Portainer one Click on the tunnel and click on configure. And then click on the tab public host name. This is the place where I will create my applications. Those are the internal applications I want to expose using this Cloudflare tunnel to the internet, right? So if I click on add public host name, I can now say, right, add a domain name for Portainer. In this case, I will use portainer.modernworkspace.blog and the service type is internal. This is the internal configuration. That means Portainer is running. If I go back to Portainer, you can see it's running in my internal network. This is the URL and it is not running with a certificate. So if I go back to Cloudflare, I will choose HTTP because that's just a plain website and paste the internal URL. 
delete the HTTP part, etc. Now, so what I'm creating, what I'm doing here is I'm creating a DNS entry in that domain uh, name, which is already running on Cloudflare. In this case, it will be portainer.modernworkspace.block. And I'm telling uh, the Cloudflare application on the Cloudflare tunnel, it has to reach out, right? If, let's go. It has to reach out to this internal server on this port. What's happening is that the tunnel is running in the same internal network where my portainer Docker container is running. Both are running on the same server. So this makes sure that my Cloudflare tunnel will be able to reach out internally to that portainer server and communicate with it. This is also a security issue, right? Um, not an issue, but you have to consider that all the communication between that Cloudflare tunnel component here and this portainer component is unencrypted. So that means if someone gets access to your Cloudflare zero trust portal, now they can expose servers or uh, get data from your internal network. Make sure that's protected with two-factor authentication, several steps. Make sure your um, network is also protected internally, right? Uh, in my case, this is running in a DMZ. It's not able to reach out to a different part of my network. That's something to consider from the internet, from the internal encryption side. Right, let's go. So if I click on save host name, now what happens is you can see it has successfully created this application. If I go back to my DNS records, click on records now, you will see that there is an additional record now for portainer.modernworkspace.block automatically created within the Cloudflare DNS platform. And it's also proxied to a specific host name. You don't have to worry about this. The tunnel component and the application configuration from the Cloudflare side will take care of this. You don't have to worry. Now, as I can see, this is running fine. If I click on this URL and open up the website. So the Portainer portal is now exposed using that DNS name and it is also secured with an SSL certificate. If I click on the SSL certificate for more information, you will see that it's a Cloudflare certificate now. So let's publish the WordPress blog I have. It's the same, basically the setup is just the same, right? So WordPress is running using HTTP internally it's not secured and I will just copy over this IP address because this is the IP address I will have to provide. Let's add a public host name. If you, uh, we are in the tunnel configuration within Cloudflare, add a public host name. I will just say, listen to that bartered workspace.block domain and create an HTTP connection to this internal server. This is the URL where my WordPress uh, internal website is running. It's just HTTP, so that's fine. And now I will create this hostname, this application. It has created it successfully. That's fine. When I click here and I click on the domain name, now I am using modernworkspace.blog, that internet domain name now, and it's connected to that internal website that internal WordPress website, which is running here. That's the only thing you have to do. As you can see, it has already provided me with a certificate, valid certificate from Cloudflare. So if there are specific applications you need to access on a, a specific port from the internet and you want to use that Cloudflare tunnel, remember, this is the format for that. And if it's just HTTP or HTTPS internally, for example, a website or a blog, this is the URL for that. Now, if you go back to the DNS records within Cloudflare, you will see that there are several records created now and that's being done automatically. It has, it has created the modern workspace block uh, DNS record and it's being proxied by the uh, Cloudflare network as well, automatically in the backend. You don't have to worry about this. If, if you go, for example, if you go back here and delete this this public host name, this application, if you want to delete it, it will also take care of that 
DNS entry here and it will delete the DNS entry here because at the end the DNS record is being, is being managed by Cloudflare automatically. One important thing I want to mention as well is my internal websites are running on HTTP connections, right? So nothing is encrypted internally. That's also the security part you have to consider uh, because that Cloudflare tunnel component is able to reach out on uh, to all the services in your internal network. But you, can, you could have applications, of course, internally, websites internally, which are running on HTTPS with a self-signed certificate, right? So how would you publish those? Well, that's fairly simple. Um, for example, if you click if you click here and say edit, and now I'm telling uh, the Cloudflare tunnel, this is an HTTPS connection internally. And that self-signed certificate, of course, will throw up an error, right? So if I want to just ignore it, click on additional application settings. This is the setting you need to just ignore the internal SSL or the TLS verification and then enable this option, no TLS verification. So that means that when that Cloudflare component internally, when that Docker container in my case will communicate to that application internally using HTTPS, it won't mind a self-signed certificate. That's something to consider when setting up applications which are using self-signed certificates on your internal network and publishing them using Cloudflare Tunnel to the internet. So this is a very easy and secure way to expose internal websites, internal applications to the internet without opening up ports in your firewall or without port forwards. Again, those internal applications which you expose using Cloudflare well, they will be protected with an SSL certificate, of course. And there are other options there in the tunnel configuration for other application sites and services. Uh, take a look at them. Uh, this is a very easy and secure way to expose websites using Cloudflare Tunnel to the internet. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. As always, thank you and don't forget to subscribe. See you again.